Hi, Five here, and this is the first episode of Connective Tissue, a series in which I look at works that are connected by themes, concept, or what got linked together in my brain. And I wouldn't have to do multiple videos covering the same subject matter multiple times. Today we're going to be talking about Beauty and the Beast stories. We're going to talk about the 90s Disney version, The Shape of Water, and Disney's Gargoyles. So in 1991, Disney made the Beauty and the Beast film. So you have this character, Belle, she's an outcast in her society because she marches to the beat of her own drum, she reads, she dreams of adventure in the great wide somewhere, her dad is an inventor who trespasses on Beast Castle land and gets held prisoner. Belle decides to swap places with her father because her father is sick, Beast is a jerk at first, Belle tries to run away. Eventually they start to get along after Beast shows that he's not such a bad dude. But I do think that there's some problems with this movie, especially when you look at it in a modern context. I think people get a little overly defensive about this film, but you know, just, you know, hear me out, take it easy. So most people bring up the fact that this movie is not Stockholm Syndrome because Belle falls in love with the Beast after he chooses to become a better person, and I think we should start to look at why the Beauty and the Beast stories have come to work and mean in a modern context and how they've been used in the past. The version of the story that we're more culturally familiar with and that the Disney version is based off of is was written by a French woman named Madame de Villene, Villene, Villeneuve, I can't say it, Villeneuve, published in 1740, and it was used to make young women more comfortable with the idea of marrying a guy that they don't know for their families, usually to secure money or property, really it was an exchange of goods. So it was kind of like, don't worry honey, I know you don't know this dude that well and you don't know if he's gonna treat you like you're a human being, but you know, he has money. And that's what's important, and we're- and you know, you're not gonna be poor, at least, at the very least. You're gonna marry this rich noble dude, even if he's a shitbag. So that's kind of like breaking even in this time period, sweet tea. Now, here's the thing with Beauty and the Beast stories. Back in the day, it was the woman in the beauty role who had to change and learn to accept to love the beast as he was and to see the man on the inside that the beast is worthy of love and that her preconceived notions about him were wrong and that's her growth and that's what the story is based upon. And then the beast is revealed to be like an actual chill dude and that beauty was just having wild misgivings about a beast who chose to take her as his prisoner because her father plucked a rose from his garden. The people making the 1991 film were like, hey maybe we should like change this a little bit because the idea of a woman being imprisoned by a man and having to change to love the man who imprisoned her was like not really going to work in 1991 if it was played completely straight like that. That's why when you see knockoff animated films where they try to cash in on Disney's Beauty and the Beast, they use the original storyline and they tend to fall real flat because by modern standards, it's seen as genuinely cruel that a woman should have to change to love her captor. Watch any of Phalus' Beauty and the Beast knockoff reviews for a more in-depth look at what I'm talking about. So instead of Belle being the one who has to change, it was the idea that the Beast should learn to be a better person. And I think that that was a smart move to, ch to lean in on that and kind of examine the fact that both Beast and Belle must feel like outcast and like how they feel both very alone and kind of want someone to like bond with or like share companionship with which makes their relationship seem a lot more organic and kind of shows the compatibility between these leads. But here's the thing, people who didn't grow up watching this movie and don't have nostalgia for it have pointed out that it has kind of rather unhealthy elements, even if Belle does not have Stockholm Syndrome. And it was kind of par for the course in the 90s in terms of depicting young men for young people toward young people, is that there was always kind of problematic things happening or problematic elements. Think of movies like She's All That, The 10 Things I Hate About You, multiple family shows wherein the romance is based upon deception or annoying a woman into liking the male lead. Yes, this is a fairy tale and I understand that teaching kids about personal growth is important, but when you get down to it, this... Yes. <gasps> no, Bill, I won't let you do this! You have my word. Done! No, Belle, listen to me. I'm old. I've lived my life. Wait. 
tail! Wait! Has to happen in order for the narrative to give us this. Still as old as time, song as old as rhyme, beauty and the beast. Tale. And having a warm, having a romance based on a woman being separated from her family and basically all of society and being held a literal prisoner to, in order to save her father is not a good way to start a romantic relationship. And as an adult, I can see what they were trying to do here with the progression of Belle and Beast's relationship. Like, I get it, but there are children watching and internalizing these things. Are they gonna be able to like completely comprehend that, hey, people changing kind of has limits? Like, this isn't exactly a great message to be aiming at children when it comes from a romantic perspective because there have been cases in like it's been recorded that you know it has influenced young people the idea of i want to change my romantic partner i want to help them become better and it stems from these stories that we show them and it stems from the stories that we start to show them when they're young children these messages about you're going to be the one to change this like broken person or this angry person into a better person and then you get to have this romantic partner and maybe we need to like look into that and maybe reconsider why we're always repeating these types of stories in which it's up to the duty of a romantic partner to fix another person rather than another person looking inward on themselves. And while Beauty and the Beast technically doesn't have Belle fixing the beast, it is completely predicated on her being his prisoner, being in her being in his vicinity that makes him want to change. He didn't make the change himself completely for himself. He changed because he wanted to be with her, thus showing that it was her presence her being there, her being in his range that made him want to be a better person. So let's move on to this next film. The Shape of Water is a 2017 American romantic dark fantasy film directed by Guillermo del Toro and written by del Toro and Vanessa Taylor. It stars Sally Hawkins, Michael Shannon, Richard Jenkins, Doug Jones, and Michael Stallenberg, and Octavia Spencer, set in Baltimore, Maryland in 1962. The story follows a mute cleaner at a high security government laboratory who falls in love with a captured humanoid, e humanoid amphibian creature. The filming took place in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada between August and November 2016. Now the whole deal with this film is that a woman who is marginalized because of her identity and disability comes to love a fish man because she can relate to him being othered. When we were talking about the Beauty and the Beast 1991 film, it was clear that they made an active effort to give Beast more character and have the Beast character be the one who has to change because he's the one holding a person captive. And in that way, the Beast gets a more meteor role as a character because he has to go through an arc, a character arc. And after that, you can kind of see this shift in our society wherein monster men in taking the forefront and becoming more complex characters, their female love interests would be given less as characters because they would be so humanized that it wouldn't really be a big acceptance role for the women to love these characters. It just became less and less shocking that a woman could love a monstrous creature man. So it became less part of that character arc. The film did a great job of giving Elisa agency and setting her up as her own person outside of Charlie. I find Elisa to be very likable and engaging as a protagonist with a rich internal life. She has friends and hobbies and like really has her own sense of personality. You really leave this film understanding who Elisa is as, her, as a character and the kinds of things her life is going through. But the film also needed to sell us on a good romance. I think the reason why this movie has fallen by the wayside is because the romance is really, really dry. The romance is the crux of the film, and the problem is, is that Charlie, the name that we're gonna give the fishman, because I don't want to have to call him the fishman throughout this analysis, doesn't have an interior life or that or big enough personality that people find it more like a girl falling in love with a pet than a legit romance. Like, what is Charlie? Charlie's motivation? What's going on in his life? What did he like before he met Elisa? Why didn't they tell him it wasn't okay for him to eat cats? And it's not a great romance if the audience doesn't if the audience isn't also enamored by their tender love. There's a reason why a film like Titanic has stood has stood in the cultural zeitgeist and hasn't been forgotten forgotten unlike other best picture winners. 
strong romance is what people came to this story for like there's a lot of social commentary going on here that's really great but because the romance isn't as strong it's harder to remember the story because it's what the story is built upon and i feel like that's why despite winning the best picture at the oscars that this movie has kind of fell off after its initial release and if you weren't a monster fucker and it's because elisa is a well-defined character and charlie is not so it makes their romance very flat. Now, connective tissue is not always meant to be one of those one property is better than the other, but it might be sometimes. I do want to leave on a happier note though. Here comes my Gargoyles agenda. Gargoyles is an American animated television series produced by Walt Disney Television and distributed by Buena Vista Television and originally aired from October 20 from October 1994 to February 1997. Let me just play this so you get the gist of the show. It 1,000 years ago, superstition and the sword ruled. It was a time of darkness. It was a world of fear. It was the age of gargoyles. Stone by day, warriors by night. We were betrayed by the humans we had sworn to protect, frozen in stone by a magic spell for a thousand years. Now here in Manhattan, the spell is broken, and we live again! If you like Beauty and the Beast romances, Gargoyles is it, babe. It's re it really is it. You have Elisa and Goliath as your main romantic leads. Elisa is a modern woman of 1994, a detective who meets the gargoyles and decides to help them because she's a really cool person who believes in justice and they solve crime and whatever is going on that week in New York City. Goliath is the leader of the remaining gargoyles and he's trying to get acclimated to the 1990s and is kind of like the dad of the group and is trying to protect this new land of 1990s New York and they meet each other as a result. Gargoyle has a romance works because Elisa has like a strong internal life outside of Goliath and has like friends and Goliath himself also has a good interior life with people he cares about outside of Elisa but they go well together and it's not a curse or an extreme external force that drives them together it's that they genuinely get along and have this relationship grow organically. It's a lot more meaningful that these characters choose to be together rather than something else forcing them and because it's a show they have multiple episodes developing their relationship you get to see them go from being friends to you know being lovers with the hint, the hint of will they won't they because Goliath turns to stone during the day time and is a gargoyle and Elisa is a beautiful human woman and the drama that comes from having a relationship with someone who just has like a different kind of body and a different kind of life. So if you're into Beauty and the Beast type stories, you should definitely check out Gargoyles. It has a lot of fun, really action-packed, just a great, great show. It's streaming on Disney Plus. Also, it stops after season two, and I deny that season three exists. Just don't, don't watch season three. We, we don't talk about season three in this house. I also want to end this off with a note that I actually really like all of the things I just talked about. Like, I'm really fond of the Beauty and the Beast movie. Like, I watch it a lot, and I, I want to go see Shape of Water on on a date and it didn't go great but like honestly that movie like I love the cinematography in that movie and I think the acting is really good like I think it deserves its best picture award but I don't think that it's I, I think it deserves its best picture award I just don't think the romance in it was that good and I hope that you guys like this little series and we'll tune in next time I don't know what we'll be talking about but it will be something interesting I'm sure of it um, so this is like a bit more serious, but there are still protests going and I think this is like important and that we should support these protesters. So there's gonna be links in the description and pro or in the pinned comment where you can sign petitions, give to bail funds, and you know, donations to funerals, that kind of thing. Um, thank you for watching. You can get this cute art of Aliza and Goliath on TeePublic and you can follow me on YouTube or subscribe to me. You can also follow me on Twitter or you can do none of that and watching was enough. Thank you.